All people want to know is, have you ever played through all of them at once? <laughs> that can't be it. Hey, this is Brian from Bees, and I'm here with Sam Newman, the plumes guy. You're known for being the guy that just has one I, one of every, is you have every production, right? I have every production one, and I have a bunch of other ones, um, a bunch of one-offs and stuff. But there's a surprising amount of production ones. There's a lot. And you, today was the milestone. Yeah, so today, Earthquaker Day, 2023, I uh, got my 40, 48th, 49th, 50th, and 51st. I just keep making the same mistake over and over. Losing my mind right now, yeah. I saw the picture before, so I knew to lose my mind, and now I can act like it's not as cool to me as it was. But I got the one that I cared about the most, so I'll show you. This one was oh, very Oh, he picked that one up. Yep, that was pretty cool. You deserve that one, absolutely. Thank you, I was very intent on this. I'm very drawn to some of these overprint ones, where it's like... Textured? Yeah, well, in the concentric circles that go all the all way the down. All the way down instead. That's I'm a gonna... true Plumes Collector's knowledge right there, dude. That's right, That's yeah. true. <laughs> yeah. Is the budget gonna be just for Plumes, or is it everything today? I might get that Aurelius, too. I'm not really sure. It's cool to just see, like, I, these, some of these, like, I'm not in the market for. It's just cool to see anyway. So maybe you can help me pick the next one. I think I need to get one of those overprint ones with, yes. with the circles all the way down. We have to pick a really good one. I also noticed that oh teal God. one. Yeah, you're right. I'm gonna think in terms of which ones do I already have a version of that colorway without the overprint. Like, I have that teal one without the overprint. That's like the special Oh yeah, colors, oh yeah, you're print. right. That's, That's sort of like dude. tangerine kind of thing. That's yeah. really cool. Even um, this, dude, I, I, you might have been saying something about that, but that is so oh, good. I got weirdly obsessed with white vein with colorways in general. I have a handful of other pedals by Earthquaker and white vein now. I ended up selling one or two of those because I think I was like, all right, I can afford to have one niche. If my niche is spend all the money on plumes, that's all right. That's, that's what but you I, gotta I think do, maybe man. I can't like I can't go too hard. I'm noticing this one right here. Whoa, that's dude. a that could be the one. Yeah, I really dude. like how I couldn't blame you on that front. Check that out. That's pretty cool. Look at that. that it's is like sick. I don't know if you can really see it in there, but there's like you can see all the texture in the blue because it's like I think that might be the one, man. Uh, I think I'm gonna be honest with you, Summit Sam. Uh, I don't own a single plumes. What's wrong with you? You can buy one for like fifty dollars. There's no excuse plumes, at this man. point. I just don't have a plumes. <laughs> well, have you tried owning almost fifty plumes? It's really senseless. You shouldn't do it. See, I think this is such a cool thing that Earthquaker goes so hard with the one-offs. I don't even know of another pedal company that gives you the opportunity to own like a one-of-a-kind version of their pedal. I think they're kind of changing the game a little bit. It's kind of neat. I mean, did I pay a five thousand dollar membership to to get in the club? Maybe, but. <laughs> Just keep spending all my money on the same pedal. I think when I first heard of you, you had 12, yeah. and that was when Emily Hopkins did all 12. It was 12, yeah, and at the time, I remember thinking I had 11, and she and I had kind of become buddies, and I was like, hey, would you would you have any interest in me sending you my collection? You could yeah. run it through your harp. And she was like, oh my God, yes, we have to do that. I was like, great, and we were excited that we had 11, and then I, I texted her the next day, I was like, actually, I have a 12th one on the way, and we were all excited and waiting for the 12th. If you could flash forward and, and understand that one day we would have this many sitting in front of us, uh, yeah, she wouldn't believe it. I wouldn't believe it. Yeah. Why? Why, why plumes? Is it you why? love? Is it it's like a tube screamer style pedal? Do you love that pedal, or did you just love the collectability? Because you're local, somewhat to Akron. Yeah, yeah so. I live in Cleveland. I'm not far oh, away. Okay. Well, first of all, it's spiraled completely out of control. Yeah, yeah. I can't sit here and say that I'm actually justified in owning 51 of the same pedal, but I honestly think it's going to go down as kind of a modern day classic. I know yeah, it, might, yeah. it might sound kind of silly or maybe a little bit uh, hyperbolic, but um, I think not. I think it really might because at the price point. It's a hundred bucks. It, it often beats out, in my perspective, sonically beats out a lot of a lot of drive pedals. It's a great sound of pedal. That, yeah. that's, that costs way more. Um, it's so accessible. I think it was like it's obviously Earthquaker's bread and butter, or has become one of their bread and butter pedals. Very very active in the uh, in the Earthquaker Devices owner group. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, on, yeah. on Facebook. I remember when I bought like my first one. And then I bought, this is a couple years ago, and then I bought like the Purple Sparkle one, and I sort of in jest uh, posted on there and said like, man, I just bought this, and I just bought a Purple Sparkle. Should I start a Plumes collection? I was like yeah, joking, yeah, jokingly yeah. said that. And I was like, maybe I'll start a Plumes collection. Maybe I'll actually do that. I bought another one, and before I knew it, they were putting out like a new one, like at least every month. And then I just went down the rabbit hole. I discovered like, you know, some of these Japanese ones that existed, and I told myself, um, I'd be lucky if I ever get even one of them. But, yeah. you know, flash forward, I've, I've just, I've scrounged my way to, to, to collecting this ridiculous amount of them, but 
it's fun. It's like, and you know what the other thing is? They're a hundred bucks a piece. You know, I've probably spent, I don't know, between on average- $5,000. Yeah, probably $5,000, <laughs> but but it's like a little bit at a time. Yeah, and yeah. Like, and I've had so many people, I, mean, I think one of the most common questions I get is just why? Why yeah, would you yeah, do that? Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? At this point, I've developed a thing where I just say, it makes me happy. I don't know. And it's easy, yeah. it's easy to do. It's a little bit at a time. I didn't buy them all at once. And it's, you know, people buy a $5,000 guitar and get less enjoyment than I've gotten all along the way getting to collect and find all these. You got famous as the plumes guy. Yeah, I mean, you can't buy to... a $5,000 guitar and get that. You so. don't get a nickname. You're just no. another blues lawyer, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you have a favorite? I definitely have some favorites. I actually just picked up a couple of my favorites yeah, here. Yeah. Earth Quaker let's, Day. Let's... This is fantastic. Um, I, I really like these quite a bit. This is the beginning of, they're obviously starting to do some of these sort of relic, um, like multicolored print ones, which is really neat. This is what's called uh, an overprint, or you know, they people often mislabel them as misprints, but they're really kind of intentionally, um, okay. intentionally misprinted ones. So this they've never done before, though. They've, they're doing this sort of embossed thing where they yeah, got, that was like, cool. I saw that. Yeah, yeah it's like six overprints in in vi different configurations. Um, but if I'm just talking like favorites, like gut yeah. reaction, love this one. As soon as I got this one last year, I was I was really in love with that one. Um, the blackout was hard to find and I think it, it looks great. As far as like production ones go, because again, the one-offs are like, oh, I saw them on a table and picked them out. Yeah, exactly. But some, they're, they're doing some really cool production ones now. This one's a little older. I think this is from, forgive me if I get it wrong, like Munch Music. I thought that was really cool. This is a really recent one, both of these, that they have like 50 or 70 of each. But I'm a huge fan of this one. I did change the knobs on that one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just, they're getting more creative with it. So there's a lot of cool stuff out there. Earlier we were talking and I, I noticed the bat ones. Those are the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, you said? Yeah, and I don't know if they're gonna do more of the Plumes ones, but they're definitely continuing on with their like EQD Rock, Rock Hall partnership. That's awesome. And like, as a Clevelander, I feel like it's pretty cool. These are almost like the most local to me that a Plumes could possibly be. A series, they're called the Bat Cave. I think okay. Bat Cave, yeah. Bat Cave Plumes. But these Rock Hall ones, you know, they didn't, actually this one they sold individually. Um, I think for the next three, they only sold as sets. So to show, so my, this is my commitment level. I think it was like $477 per set because it was like, because it was three pedals. Oh, so yeah, it was Rainbow, yeah. Rainbow Machine, Hizumita, and, and Plumes, but they only did it as sets. So each time I, I made that investment and then took the time to, to sell the ones that I didn't want. So I just, every time I just kept the Plumes, but I would make this like $500 investment just to keep my $100 pedal every time. There's no other way around it. You know, I can't just call them up and be like, hey, it's Plumes guy. Can you separate one from the set? No. So I have something for you. I, I told you earlier. I, did, I didn't let you open it. Thank you, by the way. Funny, you guys. You guys. This is the second note I've ever gotten from you guys because the first. Maybe you didn't know. Like when I got that, when I bought your your plumes, um, it had a little note inside. There were some guitar picks. There were some like, and the note said like, "May this, may this help you on your your you know your path to world domination." Yeah, yeah. Like no, I think I did was write that. You? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, and I was me. Like, yeah, yeah. I was like, I was like, I was like, oh, they, that was actually one of the first moments where I was like, oh, someone actually like knows who I am and knows what I'm doing. I can't wait till you find your new special cranker in there. <laughs> So we, Whoa! So we had our friends. We we uh, do a lot of stuff with this, this so art cool. store for art's sake. And uh, Megan from there, we gave her one of ours a couple weeks ago, and uh, had her had her make. So you have the one of a kind, dude. It's, a, it's yeah, it's a hand painted. There are no other hand painted earthquake. We're we're yeah, we're unaware. So cool. Thank you. Uh, but so yeah, we uh, we decided to make a cat plumes for Brother, you. So thank you, man. This thanks, is man. awesome. Have fun. You got yeah. the only. I don't even have one. I'm also appreciating the details. The top of every rainbow are cat ears. Is Look that, at that. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah, the top of every rainbow streak is cat ears. Yeah. Yeah, you guys are cat cat strong. This is awesome. Thank you to our friends at Strymon. Yeah. This is an outrage. Yeah, get on me here. Thank yeah. you to our friends at Strymon. This is an outrageous amount of power that would have been very hard <laughs> and still was difficult with all their help of figuring out how to make this work. Yeah. Um, they load us so much of their awesome power supplies. We are so grateful to have them all here. Um, Ernie Ball, thank you for all these cables. Uh, this is just... To do this is not normal. No, this is not it's normal. not. Usually, you don't get this many people involved in such a, <laughs> such a bad idea. But I joke with people when they ask me about my collection. I say, yeah, it's a terrible idea. You really nobody ever has all these in the same place at the same time. So I'll just mention really quick for any other yeah. nerds who are interested. These first five are the are all uh, Japan exclusive ones. They're like 
25 to 50 of each, except this one, I think there's more than that. I don't know, this is the most recent one. But these four, they're like, I'm sorry, these three, they're 25 to 50 each, don't know the numbers on these two. But these three were like the first really difficult ones for me to find. And I think they're some of the most beautiful. They're really, really cool. Um, and they're some of the earliest like exclusive special colorway ones they did. Like these are, yeah. these, these are both like in the 4,000s. Um, and again, cause we're at like fi over 50,000 now in production. Um, so yeah, so that's some of the early exclusive stuff. They're, um, I believe these are uh, like signature colorways for Japan. And then from here, all the way through to here are all one-off petals. Yeah. Those are all one-off. Um, it's funny, if you look at some of the similarities here, like this is not one-off, this is one-off. If you put them next to each other, some of these are so similar. Yeah. Like you're getting into splitting hairs, but it's pretty cool. Um, sorry, this is not one-off. This is actually one of about five. A few years ago they did like, I think they did like a whole board giveaway. It was like a Black Friday thing and they did all these cool blackout colorways. Yeah, nice. This one, a, a testament to, to friends that I have who are so helpful and like watching out for me. My buddy, yeah. my buddy Robbie was like, he saw it on Reverb and he just immediately bought it. He didn't even wait for me. He just bought it and let nice. me know so I could pay him back for it. He's like, I'm not gonna let him miss it. It's cool to have friends who have your back. But yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, and then and then from here on are all pretty much production colorways, but there's quite a few. Um, and I'll just point out a couple of interesting ones. This this is an interesting one where when people a million, like a million people have this one. This yeah. is the Purple Sparkle Gear Hero. It's like they, everyone has this one if they have an alternative colorway one. This, 25. There are like 25 of these. Oh wow. They're so similar. This was like an early one for Primax. And um, generally when people own this one, they don't, they think they own this one. Really? And they don't, it's like if, if they have it in the secondhand market, they don't know that they have anything special. But I had to really look to find that despite its similarity to this. And this was like, I bought it for like 80 or 90 bucks from somebody on Reverb. Yeah. And that, they definitely just didn't know they had anything rare at all. Cause yeah. they just, it's just like a purple sparkle plumes, but yeah. it's kind of cool. Um, these are the rock hole ones we talked about. This was <laughs> not to, to, to speak ill of any, of any place or any exclusive dealer, but this is like um, <laughs> one of the lesser loved ones, I think yeah. just cause it's kind of, it's kind of odd and because so it was sold by Maxfield, which is like a Los Angeles like fashion brand kind of okay. something. A weird collaboration that they did. Don't know why they did it, but they did it. And they charged $275 a piece for them at retail. Oh, wow. Yeah, and like they just, for years, they just haven't really sold, but I bit the bullet and went on their website and bought it. I was like, like, fine. I don't have a choice, <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> yeah, I literally, that's the way it feels now. It's like, you know what? They're like, well, we finally sold one. Yeah, I think they, I think I was their first and last sale maybe. Um, and then I just worth mentioning, I suppose, like this one, this is from 2019 Earthquaker Day. Um, and so, you know, there oh, were, yeah. yeah, so this is the terracotta one. Yeah. And that was another one where like, I had to try, I had to try so hard to find it. And I was like, it was one of the earliest, I think I bought that when I had about, it was like my fifth. Yeah. And, um, and I found someone locally who like took pity on me in, in Akron. I went and drove and met yeah. up with him. And he's like, I can tell you're, you're kind of a nerd like me. He's like, I get, I get the hustle. It's not as important to me as it is to you. Uh, and so we like did, yeah. a tra did a trade plus cash. But um, anyway, I guess those are some of the ones of note. They're all super cool. You ready to try this out? Yeah. <laughs>
only way to turn it off. Just turn the amp off. That's just the noise floor. You know, this is ridiculous. If you plug a, a, a measly 51 in, you're already at a terrible noise floor. Insane. I, I think that wasn't meant to be. Not like what you expected. You know, yeah, I think so. Chaos. This is generally unlistenable madness. Just, don't do this. Just don't do this, yeah. This is... But also, also watch this video because it's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sam. This is awesome. I appreciate you doing this, buddy. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Likewise. Good time. Let's cut it. <laughs>